video, we're going to be taking a ride on the high capacity metro train from Oakley to South Sierra. The reason why we're here is because I want to have a look at the Sky Rail because the high capacity metro train runs from Oakley and we don't have them on the Glenmaver line or the Alamo line. That's right. And this train line has a lot of very interesting history. So we're going to talk a bit about that today too. Okay, good. Are you ready? Yeah. Can we have a go? Come yes. Up. Cameraman, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> All right, let's do it. Yes. The government project to remove level crossings along the Oakley to Flinders Street section of track in 2017 came about in a very different way from when this line first opened in 1879. Back then, the government had little to do with investing and building rail networks. Instead, it allowed private companies and investors to build them to suit their business interests. The Flinders Street to Oakley sections of the Pakenham, Cranbourne and Frankston lines dates to a time when the Melbourne train network did not radiate from the city like it does now. The Oakley to Pakenham line was built to shift Gippsland's resources, being coal, timber, gold and agricultural products, towards the coast and the city. Building the line was very difficult. It was built entirely by hand and needed to cross swamps, mountains and valleys to make it to Oakley. The Hobson's Bay Company first proposed connecting the existing Pakenham line at Oakley to Melbourne. After some very high level discussions, including a proposal to run the line through Brighton, the government agreed to take over the construction of the line from South Yarra. The Oakley South Yarra section of the track was opened on the 2nd of April 1879. Oakley was the terminus of the Bunyip line from Gippsland. The area was first settled in 1840. This happened quite quickly because it was the highest point for some miles around, not prone to swamps and flooding. Within two years, the new line connecting Oakley to Flinders Street caused the area's population to flourish. The first Oakley station buildings opened in 1877. Oakley also had large railway workshops and yards near it that became a major employer for local residents. Oakley was also once the junction for both the Outer Circle Line and the proposed, but never built, Ross Town Line. Oakley is a major bus interchange for all buses that come into here, such as the 903 that goes to Altona and Mordialic, as well as the 900 that goes to Caulfield and Roeville. Hughesdale is the first or last station on the section of track elevated to remove level crossings. This section is called the Sky Rail. Like most urban railway track development, the project to build the Sky Rail met with strong resistance from local residents and railway enthusiasts, who lamented the loss of historic train stations, gates and fittings. Now as a historian, I completely understand their concerns, but as a car driver too, I can tell you that not being forced to sit at a level crossing for 25 minutes waiting for trains to clear is an absolute revelation. To honour the historic legacy of the stations on Sky Rail, the government used historic images of the line on the partitions between tracks. The next station is Murrumbina. Murrumbina was originally a dairy and market garden area. There are several claims to the source of its name. One is from Murrum Murrumbeen, a highly respected elder of the Boon Wurrung clan. The other is from the clan's word for frog hollow, in honour of the frogs, eels and fish that used to thrive in the Murrumbina Creek that used to run near Dandenong and Nirum Roads. Carnegie is the last or first section of the Sky Rail. Before the Sky Rail was built, the boom gets at Kunong Road stopped traffic for up to 87 minutes during weekday morning peak. The suburb of Carnegie evolved from a township called Ross Town after William Murray Ross. 
Ross was an aspirational developer who in 1875 envisaged the entire area of swamps being transformed into a railway and village centred on his sugar beet mill. Although the enterprise failed, the path of his intended railway became a popular cycling route and the Rostown Hotel is still operating today. The next station is Caulfield. The next station is Caulfield. Caulfield Station was first built to service the nearby Caulfield Racecourse in 1879. The station buildings that stand today were constructed in 1913 or 14. Did you know there was originally a special platform just for boarding and disembarking the horses? No, I did not. Tell me more. I don't know anything more about it. The buildings are considered a very intact example of the Federation freestyle of architecture designed by J.W. Hardy. They have been refurbished and improved several times since then, including in 2017 when walkway shelters were built. Caulfield is where the line splits off to Frankston. You can catch the 3 and 3A tram to Melbourne Uni and Darling Road. You can also catch the 900 bus to Roeville. So how did you enjoy going on this train, Griff? It was smooth, comfortable and soft. What does that mean? What does soft mean about a train ride? It means that the seats were very com comfortable and I would like to go on these trains in the future. Still smelt like a Melbourne train though. Yeah, it did. <laughs> Next station is Malvern. You know what I like about Malvern? I think that this platform looks like a face. What do you think? Yeah, it does look like a face. <laughs> The area of Malvern was named by Sir James Lorimer after the estate of Judd Skinner, who had named it after Malvern in Worcestershire, England, like the source. The government of 1909 or thereabouts undertook a major refurbishment of this section of track to duplicate the line. This involved lowering Malvern station considerably and building the station buildings there today. This was done to also remove nearby level crossings, so it turns out that the Sky Rail is not the first level crossing removal project along the line. After the renovation, Malvern Station became the site of several bizarre accidents over the years. Several involved men falling from a carriage and having their heads cut off by passing trains. Yeah. At Malvern, you can catch the 16 train to Melbourne Uni and Q. The next station is Armadale. Armadale is named after the Scottish town that was the birthplace of James Munro, the 15th Premier of Victoria. The station buildings from this point to Hawkesburn are almost identical and probably built around 1910 in the Federation style popular at the time. You can see in this photo that the shelter over the incline was built later but the station itself is largely unchanged. Arbordale station's great claim to fame came in 1948 when it became the disembarkation point of a short train journey undertaken by the British King George VI. At Armadale, you can catch the 6th tram to Moreland Station and Glen Iris Station. The next station is Turak. The trains do not stop through this area, so keep that in mind if you want to come visit. You can catch the 72 tram to Cotton Road and Melbourne University from here. Turak is named after Turak House, built for Melbourne merchant James Jackson in 1849. The name means reedy grass or reedy swamp in the Woiwurrung language. Today the name Turak represents people who have a lot of wealth and privilege. Even though the station is painted a yellowy and white, underneath it's an identical design to Armadale and the upcoming Hawksburn station. The next station is Hawksburn. Hawksburn takes its name from a local resident called Hawksburn House. A distinctive feature along all this section of track are the large Canary Island date palms near each station's entrance. These trees are now around 100 years old. They were popular back then because they were exotic and distinctive, but also very hardy and grew fast. So if you ever can't find the station along this line, look for a large date palm and there's a good chance it's nearby. We hope you guys had fun watching us go on our little journey from Oakley to South Yarra. Um, there are lots of lines that come into here, such as the Sandringham line. And that's why we decided that South Yarra needs its own video, so hopefully we'll get round to that in the next school holidays. Like and subscribe.
subscribe. Like and, like and subscribe. You know Bye. Bye. Always remember to touch on to Mike at the start of the <laughs>